Mr. Larry. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Did everybody bring their marijuana regulations? I have copies oh, good. of our draft. I'm not Pete. sure if you are. Oh, I'm Larry. Mike, oh. Mike, if you write your name and your email address down here, and I'll get you everything that we've got. So are you working off the draft uh, that I went over with you? I have, I have, yes, I have okay. done nothing with it. Okay. okay. I was hoping that the, because we invited the selectmen, yes. the police, and the fire departments here tonight. We liked it to our last meeting, then we postponed it till tonight. Oh. And uh, we have seen, obviously, nobody's here, I so. Boycott it. Well, That's. we need to proceed. We can't wait, I like agree. I said, because. So what, what I'm going to give you is this is the final draft, the final version that we presented at the last uh, Pine Valley Planning Commission meeting in December. Uh, the first okay. five pages of it is basically what we use to. It's essentially, the, it's essentially the same as what I gave you originally, but there were a couple of modifications to it. <clears throat> For instance, I think, as I recall, in the version I gave you, originally we had a clause in there that said uh, you couldn't be in a building with a, another physician or something like that. And uh, that was put in there because one of the people on our committee misread a section of the state regulations and thought that was the case. When we went back and reread the regs, what it actually said was you can't be writing prescriptions in the distribution facility. Okay. So you can have a doctor's office in the building and they can issue uh, prescriptions. It's just the dispensary itself cannot issue it. So we took that line out. And the rest of it is pretty much uh, the same as, a, as the original version that you had. Uh, again, you know, we have the definition. And if you re recall how this works, when the state, and I'm going to use the word license even though they don't, when they license a nonprofit to operate a, uh, a medical marijuana facility, they are giving them a license to cultivate it at one location. Uh, process it at one location and distribute it at one location and that can all be at the same location or they can have one other off-site location uh, where they can dispense it so they can either grow it process it and sell it at one location or they can grow it and process it at one location and distribute it at another location and again this is going to be happening in indoors it's all uh, and apparently the state's not going to let them use hydroponics, which I thought they were going to. It's going to have to be all soil. And uh, we've had some uh, folks out from Denver and California who had operated these, and they think that's a real uh, mistake. Because apparently... Well, why do they not want to use hydroponics? I don't know. Why do they? Why do you have to be a nonprofit? <laughs> I mean, there, there are a lot of little idiosyncrasies uh, when they put the regulations together that... Uh, I don't necessarily understand, but I think when they took a look at what happened in California, uh, and the mantra there was sort of whatever California did, don't, uh, and they sort of modeled it instead after what Colorado and Washington did, and they did a, a, a fairly good job. So a nonprofit can apply for you know a license, and that license allows them to do that. A nonprofit can apply for up to three licenses, which means if they're granted. Uh, they would have, to, you know, they would have the ability to have three growing locations and three distribution facilities, or they could have one growing location and three dis different distribution facilities. Whatever you sell, you have to grow. You can't buy it from somebody else. They're not going to, they're not going to license somebody to grow it and license somebody else to sell it. Do you germinate the plants from seed, or do you buy the seedlings from somebody else? I have no clue. That's not specific. Yeah. Here's the regs. I have no clue. Yeah. If you want me to the regs don't really get into that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the growers do. And it's it's really sophisticated. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the presentation they gave and how they control the, uh, the content in, 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 and things like that. Um, under an emergency situation, under very tight specific, you can buy it from somebody else under specific circumstances. If you, you know, your crop goes bad or you run out or you 
you, you, you have to you have an emergency or something. But it's very tight. Uh, pretty much every, in all of the circumstances, you can only sell what you grow. Uh, so do you see this as the uh, camel putting the nose in the tent yeah. with uh, further expansion? For Absolutely. Okay. This is step one. Uh, well, first of all, I won't, I won't say that. There is a valid, uh, uh, a, a valid and legitimate uh, use for medical marijuana. Uh, that's not a joke. That's, you know, people are using it all over the place legally and illegally. Mm -hmm. And there's been enough research and doctors to show that there are certain types. And if you look in the regulations, they're very specific about what your ailment is that you can qualify to be a, a card-carrying patient for for this. Uh, but the re but in, in terms of in terms of how the attitude towards marijuana is changing this country, in this country, um, I think everybody's giving it a second thought. You know, and, you know they just started selling it recreationally in Colorado. Uh, they were doing it in Washington. Uh, there are a lot of other states, you know, Connecticut, Maine, they've been uh, selling it, or Maine, Connecticut is about to, Maine's been doing it for a while, have been selling medical marijuana. Um, so I'm not sure it's necessarily, you know, getting your foot in the door, uh, because it is a legitimate thing. But I think that uh, in terms of, you know, where is it going to go from here, everybody's attitudes are changing about it. Uh, they just are. You know, they're, they're, everybody's attitudes are changing about a lot of things. Um, so, and we in the office, we were, you know, really wondering, uh, is it a foot race at a national level between, uh, uh, you know, same-sex marriage and recreational use of marijuana? Because the, the public attitudes to both of those have changed dramatically. And, you know, state by state, they're being addressed, and, uh, you know, they're addressing what's seen as a, a legitimate need. So. But I hate to show my age, but when I was in Boston going to school, I went to a lecture, Jerome Letvin from MIT and Professor Tim Leary oh, from Harvard, Timothy. expanding the uh, the mind-enhancing drug of LSD. LSD. And that was huge. I mean, it, 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 it almost parallels the the enthusiasm for <laughs> marijuana now until people started jumping off of buildings. And, but, uh, yes. it, well, I've heard there's a difference. So. Well, I don't think. But uh, I, re I, re I remember those days, yes. <laughs> you the Magic Bus also. and all that, yes. <laughs> Give it to Larry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, can you hmm? yep. Okay, let, let, let's move on okay, with yes. this yeah, okay. before we... Oh, uh, we digress. Yes. Memories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I don't think, you know, what we talked about was limiting the distribution facility to only 2,500 square feet. Uh, from the sellers that we've talked with, that's really all they need. A growing facility is going to be much larger, but that's going to kind of depend on the, the uh, client, the uh, number of the clients. The way the state is doing this, as you may recall, is they're trying to uh, geographically disperse all of the growing facilities and dispensaries because what they because they want them, they're not going to concentrate them where the populations are where you think you'd have the greater number of users. What they really want is to try to have a facility within driving distance of everybody so they can not have a whole lot of people uh, looking for the clause, that allow, the hardship clause that allows them to grow their own. Because I think it's a, a thought that, you know, that really is uh, an area that might get out of hand. So they're really trying to, uh, what, what their intent is, to try to disperse them geographically so that uh, they're close to everybody. So what that sort of would mean would be like if they did license one in Springfield, it would probably be a much bigger growing facility than one that they would license in uh, uh, Lee or, or a smaller a smaller town. Again, just because the number of clients that are probably going to be in the demand for it would require a larger growing facility. Uh, we were we did learn from these the operators that uh, there is an odor to it to both the growing of it and the processing of it. I kind of got it with the processing of it, but apparently the plant itself emits an odor. So we did put in some uh, clauses for uh, uh, controlling the, the uh, air discharges and uh, not allowing it to be uh, uh, detected with property lines and things like that. Um, we uh, had a couple of people interested in doing this who also wanted to expand it and also provide for uh, yoga and uh, massage therapy and aromatherapy and all these other kind of things 
uh, that they thought was kind of more holistic approach to the medical marijuana. And we're suggesting that uh, if you do want to do that, put it in the store next door or put it in another part of the building that's not part of the facility because we didn't want too much other stuff going on there where it would be kind of hard for the police or the Board of Health or the Department of Health to kind of keep track of what was really going on in there. The, uh, our local zoning enforcement officer, will he be the cop uh, or will this be more of a state uh, Board of Health regulation? Well, right now, I mean, zoning-wise, he would be the zoning okay. cop. Most local boards of health don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole. That's where I'm going, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they really want to leave it up to DPH to, to handle this. If there are any, you know, issues with narcotics or crime or something like that, that would be the police. And we do have a clause in here about the police being notified, you know, in short order if anything odd happens or uh, any laws are broken, uh, putting the onus on the operator to keep everybody informed of what's going on. Well, let's see. And just for the listening audience, uh, this is not considered agricultural. It's uh, more business industrial. Well, that's a problem. Oh. Uh, as we've all been looking into this, we think that's the case. You know, that this is an industrial use. It's very industrialized. It's very processed. It's all done in a building. They're not going to be using the vast acreage of prime farmland that you have here. But we've gotten kind of a mixed message back from the Attorney General's office on whether this falls under the you know, 40H Section 3 agricultural exemption or not. Uh, and one of the things that we're suggesting you do is in your definition of this facility, you put right in there that you, this is not an agriculturally exempt use under Section 3, Section 40A, Section 3. You know, this is an industrialized use. However, um, there have been some towns who have passed a bylaw that permits it by special permit in certain districts and prohibits it in other districts, like the agricultural district in particular, or agricultural residential districts like a lot, a lot of towns has. And the Attorney General has approved them without comment. A couple of towns have gone the step that we went, the extra step that said in their definition, this is not agriculturally exempt. And she didn't come out and say that that's wrong, but what she said was, this may be you know, this may be sort of trading on the exemption under Section Three of Chapter Forty A. Um, my guess is essentially it's going to be a, it's going to be a court case to have to resolve that mm -hmm. at some point if, if that in fact is the case. But to me, it opens up a, a lot of issues, uh, which is you know, for instance, uh, the agricultural exemption under Section Three allows you to have a agricultural use in a residential neighborhood on a two-acre lot. Uh, so if you're going to allow this as an agricultural exemption, is that really where you want it? You know, it doesn't sound like it. If it's also, you know, comes under the agricultural exemption, do they now get to apply for the tax abatement under Chapter 61 or 61B? 61A. Uh, 61A. Right. No, 61 is for 61B. A 61A and then 61B. Uh, correct. And, and, and so does it, because even though these are nonprofits, or not for profits, they're not 501C3s. So they're not tax exempt. Yeah. Blue Cross and Blue Shields, a nonprofit organization. They, right the, poor, the poor, the poor, the poor folks. They hardly yeah. make anything. Yeah. Uh, that's true. Uh, but if this is considered to be agriculturally exempt, you know, then can they file under 61A and get the tax, you know, the tax reduction? Uh, so that's something that we've always. Uh, one thing that we're suggesting, and I'm personally suggesting people do, is talk to your legislator. Because somebody's got to correct that. Either you got to change 40A, Section 3, to address it, or DPH has to change their regulations uh, to, to clarify that. Uh, part of the problem was when the regulations were developed by DPH, they didn't have a planner in the room. So they didn't really think about the processing of the zoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the questions of the conversations I had with DP, DPH was okay, who goes first? Yeah. Does DPH go first licensing the facility, or do they apply to the town first? And DPA, if you look at the regulations, DPH says, oh, they want a letter from the town with the application saying that everything is, you know, hunky-dory uh, with the community. Well, you don't really know that if they haven't already applied for the special permit. On the other hand, how are you going to know that they're actually a legitimate applicant or not? So what we put in there was if they don't have their DPH license first before they come to you, 
they need to provide to you everything they would have to provide to DPH to show that they would qualify for it. Mm -hmm. So that at least you know, you're not going to waste your time uh, with somebody. We, we've had uh, a couple of towns um, with somebody that came in and <laughs> wanted to get a special permit just for a growing facility in a little greenhouse and have a tree growing through it. Um, and it was, you know, it was just so inept, uh, and didn't, you know, that uh, uh, they ended up, you know, uh, obviously not approving it. Be what's, what's our deadline, Jim, before we have to submit this? We can hold it open for the town warrant, but when do we have to well, my make guess our is, My guess is your, war your or moratorium is up in June or July. It has to go to, f to Springtown meeting. The yeah, question okay. is, when does the uh, warrant close? Oh, we, if we have, we'll have a space on the warrant. Okay. There, that's not a problem. So we have to have this ready by probably, the, it, the warrant is what, early, first Tuesday in May, typically? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, we would have have this to the town for like April 1, let's say. Okay. So we, we don't have to make the decision. We don't have to. We don't. We don't have to. We don't have to design it tonight. Okay. But we have to make big strides in designing. I it. agree. Okay. I think the big thing is where do we put it? Well. You know, where well, yes. Well, my my opinion is like you've got to hear the, yeah. the growing facility in the industrial zone, and yeah. a dispen any dispensary only in a commercial only in the business district. Okay. Not local, not right. limited, and that's, that's only business. And is, it, now, and is the growing going to be by right in the industrial district? Or by special permit? Special permit. Okay. Well, site plan approval is a special permit. Yeah, we know we want it, that's, but it's not an approval okay. special permit. Okay. It's just a reviewing special yeah. permit. Okay. We want to make the you facility. Want to a special permit. Correct. A hard special permit. Hard, gotcha. exactly. Uh, okay. School exemption. Uh, we there's something. There's in something here. in here. Yeah. Got there's it. stuff and, in here. And let me talk about that for a second. Right. Because what the state says, the DPH, it says, lacking anything else in your bylaw, if you don't have anything in your bylaw, they have to be kept 500 feet away from any place where children congregate. You look at the donut shop. <laughs> donut shop, children's <laughs> shoe store, uh, your living room where they, they don't, their friends they, come but, over but, and play video games. But, but they don't define the children. They don't define it. So, <laughs> so what we're what we're suggesting is uh, we we put in a little bit more. Uh, where is it? Uh, no RMD or OMMD facility shall be located on a parcel which is within 300 feet, to be measured in a straight line from the nearest points of each property line, of parcels occupied by a. The public or private elementary, junior high, middle, vocational, or this is on page three of the bylaw if you want to follow along. Sorry. Under number C down at the bottom. A public or private elementary, junior high, middle, vocational, or high school, college, junior college, university, or child care facility, or any other use in which children commonly congregate in an organized, ongoing, formal basis. Or two, within 300 feet of another RMD or OMMD facility, except that this limitation shall not apply in industrial zones. And uh, let me explain why we picked up 300 feet. It's because that's what the drug-free zone distance is in Massachusetts. Uh, a number of, quite, about two years ago, they reduced it from 500 feet to 300 feet. Um, some of the growers would be happy to abide by 1,000 feet. Uh, and the reason that there's that number is because in the state of Washington, it was the first state to allow it to be used recreationally. Um, the uh, state uh, attorney general's office, that state federal AG's office, told their prosecutors, where we got other things to do, we don't have a lot of money, if it's not within a thousand feet, of a school or a playground, don't worry about it. You know, don't go chasing them around, don't hassle them. We have other th better things to work with. And so uh, a lot of the growers are still a little bit nervous about the fact that this is still federally, federally class one classified narcotic. Mm. And the feds, you know, in their regulations are not nearly as uh, uh, lax or accommodating as these local uh, state, uh, uh, state laws are. So they're, you know, happy to play ball with whatever regs the feds want to throw out there just to not have it come knocking on their door and shutting them down, which doesn't seem to be the case anyway, at least not with the current administration. So anyway, we're suggesting 300 because it's almost like you can pick a number out of the air if you want to. But if you don't have a number, it's going to be 500 feet. 
Now, should we, I just want to understand, is 300 feet located within 300 feet? Of the, uh, same question, Jim. I've got two guys. Can we measure in a straight line from the nearest points of each property line? Yep. Of a parcel occupied by? What does that mean? It means we're not measuring it from the front door to the front door. We're measuring it from the closest points of the property line. So, so we, want those pro we want those parcels to be at least 300 feet apart. Okay. So in other words, you miss. I, no, I, I, want, I want to make sure that we're understanding this. Yep. Let me get up. I mean, the UMass has a lot of property they own in the industrial zone. Yep. And uh, some of it is just ball fields and some of it is just yep. land. So, this, so it would be a straight the, line the from street. their property line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, you know, forgetting about what, where the buildings are, where the playground Correct. is, you're going with the, part of the property lines, the nearest property lines. Gotcha. That makes it easier. It, 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 but I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, you could make it zero. Now, because now you can only go into one of these. This is not a facility for impulse buying. Yeah, but you can only go in if you're a car carrying patient. Yeah, okay. So and you now, can hang around the outside yeah, if you're yeah, yeah. a teenager. Yep. Now, Very good. We, yep. want a, we want the growing facility here. Yep. This is a school. Yep. Can they build that like that? How many feet? 250? No. no. That's what I thought. That's what, okay, that, that, that is what this means. That's correct. It has to okay, be this property would have to be yeah. 300 feet. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Or pick another one. No, no. I like a thousand. You like a thousand? Yeah. I mean, 500, I just mean, a, just 500 to a thousand. Where Hopkins is, so many kids, they walk to, you know, pizza, to Cumbies, they're just out there. If it was right next to. You know, I think there's a general fear of these things. For some reason, I'm not quite sure I have the same fear level that other people have or that they've been demonstrated. I mean, in Denver, there are, are more distribution facilities than there are Starbucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, and they're, they're all you know, re relatively small, but they're all over the place. Denver's, I've been there. Denver's I've seen that. There you go. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Denver isn't Hadley. That's right. Because everybody's oh, told me that. Denver has its own issues. <laughs> 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 But I, I say let's err on the larger side and then cut it back if... But let's, let's be realistic. How many of these do you think you're going to have in Hadley? How many distributions? Well, first of all, we have to pass it through Correct. the town meeting. Correct. And you don't want to put the red and, herring up there. And, and it's also going to get passed by the state. Yep. And the state's not going to allow the concentrations. I mean, they literally are going to look at where are the patients. You know, and the patients aren't the students at UMass unless they have one of those identified specific uh, health concerns. Um, that may be one of the things we can settle on tonight. Uh, you know, 300 feet, 500 feet, or 1,000. I think 300 might be a little bit too, 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 too little. Yeah. I'm definitely in favor of 500. 1,000? Two tenths of a mile. I think to the extent that this, the Department of Public Health has already said that 500 is their default. Yeah. Um, that makes it hard for the Attorney General to challenge. Right. Correct. Um, and, and, and what you also want, you want to get to the point which some towns have done, which is pick a number that's so large that for practical purposes you can't have one in town. Because at that point yeah. now you're defeating the purpose of the city. Yeah. No, right. And I don't think the Attorney General would go for that yeah. one anyway. Yeah. I mean, a mile? Hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> Probably not. So but, it, but, it, but it's a matter, you know, pick a number that you're comfortable with and plug it in. Five? I'm okay with five. Oh, you least. Now, many towns don't have drug stores, and that's not an issue. You have to drive to another town to get your penicillin. And then we have to have a dispensary in town, specifically well, for marijuana? Yeah. You can't, you can't prohibit it. That's the law. I understand. That's what I was being. So, five? Five or a thousand. Well, I'm just concerned the, the uniqueness of Hadley and you've got the library and I just see a lot of kids in that area walking around. What's the district? Yeah, I don't I don't think you're gonna see my, my guess is that the UC dispensary is gonna be at that end of town. Well we can we sort of can start? exclude it from the village overlay. Yeah, district. Isn't this, this, that's yeah, a different district. That would work. Right? 
Well, it's not a different district. It's the 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 village overlay. How far does it go? It goes from the bridge to the 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 bike bike path. path. Yeah. So, okay, 500 feet in the village overlay district then. The 500 so feet. The five, 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 500 it's feet. Only in the and on, on an off-site medical marijuana dispensary, what we could do is sp- special permit, like we said, yeah. in the business use um, prohibited in the business or in, in the village overlay. In the village overlay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's easy. That kind of satisfies your concern. That's yeah. much better. Yeah. Well, that's that's fine. That, that's what we're trying to get so, here. Okay. Where, where are we at now with the number? Five hundred. Five hundred. Okay. Very good. But the use is not allowed in the village overlay. Correct. Nor any of your other business districts. But, uh, only in the business district, yeah. not in limited business. Correct. Right. Yep. So that's basically Route Nine and yep. a couple of. Nine. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd also Doesn't want the village, to. Yeah. Does the village just run all the way to the bridge? To the bridge. The bridge. Yeah. So yeah. really, you're talking about. Correct. Yeah. Ba- ba- you're talk, basically talking a commercial yeah. district, the okay. big, yeah, okay. large commercial district. Yeah. Um, which is where we're probably end up anyway. Which is also. Yeah. Includes well, uh, Hampshire Mall, too. Marcus. See, the, the way it's laid out, <laughs> some parts down there are industrial as well. Yeah, correct. So, right, getting um, closer to the town line, yeah. So I think we'd probably want to allow the. Dispensaries in both the industrial district and the yeah. uh, business district, that. except the overlay. Well, if you're allowing for the, 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 the uh, oh right, I'm oh, sorry, you're if right. You're allowing, yes. If you're allowing for the uh, RMD, which is all three things, in the industrial district, that allows them to dis- distribute it all. Yes. You want them to be allowed to have the standalone distribution facility in the industrial district also. In sure. the industrial, okay. yes, That's fine. yes, yeah. because part of our industrial district, it was the commercial district. It was changed yeah. for a specific by specific request, okay. but um, rather than change it back, it's easier just to keep it sure. consistent. That's Mountain Farms Mall. It's all zoned industrial. Well, that whole triangle. Triangle, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I never realized, well, growing marijuana doesn't smell, right? No, they say it does. What? Well, to get growing tobacco the, smells. The cultivation of it, they say, has a distinct odor. And then when you're processing it, which can include baking, you know, because... Well, I can see processing it, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, tobacco smells when you grow it. Yeah. It's got an odor. Yeah. yeah. So I would, I mean, I've never, well, I've never smelled this much of this stuff growing. Actually, every... You know, potatoes have an odor. Yeah, they all have that's true. Of odor and, yeah. and it's yeah. You're right. They're all they, all, they, all, they all. say they have an odor when they grow these. They're in very bright lit uh, well, yeah. rooms that they, do a special classes they, when they go in. Because they're trying to grow. They're trying to accelerate exactly. the growth. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like 12 hours on, 12 hours off. There's a specific uh, timing to get the buds, and that's where they're what they're primarily. Selling. How about fees for the permit? Do we? Are we going to put that on our fee list? Pardon? The fee. fees. for the. Oh, absolutely. Permit. We're going to add it. Yeah, that, that'll be a special permit. That's a special permit. It'll be. And, it'll and be site plan too. Yeah, we already got. It. Yeah, so okay. like special permit site plan approval. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a normal every normal right. fee is. Here, what you were trying to exactly. Would it be a normal fee or would it be a? A special. Well, I think we, we, we can we can we can make it a special fee. We we have talked about Be raising careful. our normal fees we anyway. Have to, we have yeah. to raise our because the price of advertising in a gazette. This uh, I want to say the the little ad that I just put in for the ZG Motors is like like an inch in the gazette, yeah. and it's a hundred and hundred and fifty bucks, something like that. Uh, it, 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 the average the legal notices in the Gazette have gone up quite a bit. For the last, and I looked, the last time we, were, we checked our fees was 2005 or 2006. Mm-hmm. So it's been a while, and the fees for the Gazette advertising have almost at least tripled since then. If you're going to charge a different fee for this than a regular special permit, you really need a reason for it. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, there have been some communities that said, oh, well, let's do it like the casinos. 
and we'll hit him with a municipal impact fee just because I can get with the casinos. Well, the casino legislation specifically said you could do that. There's nothing in this legislation that allows you to, you know, exact a uh, tax. Well, what are the state the fees? Area. The state fees are pretty hefty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta have five hundred. You gotta have five. You know, they're they're really hefty. Yeah, the, you have to have five hundred thousand dollars in the bank. And because the other thing with this is, it's pretty much all a cash operation. You know, you can't go to a bank and get a loan for one of these. You can't really take a credit card because it's still considered to be a uh, class one narcotic. And, well, that's you know, right from the federal exactly, regulations. Exactly. So the FDIC banks, is okay. Yeah, that's and, right. and so that's why what you're going to find is not uh, probably not a new grow facility being built. It'll be retrofitting an existing building because it's cheaper. Yep. Um, and that's how that's what they found. They've, they've been doing this. Um, there are all kinds of wrinkles. What's the state fee per license? Is there? A, you know, I don't uh, have my regs, but I got them right if here. You wanna, there, there if you want to thumb through that horrible, I it was I'll, like I'll check. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 50, it 50,000 yeah, a year. 50, uh, a year. Remember, that is also designed to fund the review board. That's true. right. And that's their justification for having that fee. Yeah. They have to have a, a staff and an executive director that's at okay. a generous yeah, these compensation. Are, these are insurance liabilities. I mean, theoretically, you know, you're going to want the police and, you know, fire to have more of a watch on that than... Any different than his mall? Yeah. Which is even bigger <laughs> and generates more kids? Yeah. Oh, you gotta be careful. So. You, you gotta be careful. You know, I think we, we have to tag it to what what our cost is to process a special permit. Right. I right. think we can't make this a profit center. Um, so, but we can, we certainly, you know, we. We can, you can certainly raise all your fees for special permits if you think they're right. too low. If you haven't you know, looked at them in a while, they probably are. Well, Jim is looking up that, if you haven't found it already. I just had a couple of formatting things. I noticed a couple of sections in here, uh, which I've marked, should have been, these should be subsections of the one before, not sections of their, on their own right. Let's see. But page so page three. So you think four and five fall under five, si under five and six. Five and six fall, fall under four. four. And if you read it, first of all, there's a colon, and then they seem to be thematically the same. Okay, I think that's true. That's a good idea. So we'll indent these. And also over here on page four. four. Uh, three and four are subsections of two. Okay, three and four indent. And at the bottom of the page, five and six are subsections of four also. Okay. And that's just that one. Okay. So, yep. yeah, the formatting very. That's fine. It gets fickle sometimes, especially if you're in Word. It decides what you'd like, what it would like yes, to indent. Well, it runs out of or indents, but uh, that's fine. Yeah, correct. Now, for our purposes, for yep. just a couple of things for Hadley purposes, since we do not yet have a comprehensive definitions. Section. Yeah, I noticed that. I was going to ask because I was yeah, we, as I was going over your, the table of use things. Yeah. I was finding that uh, I couldn't find right uh, definitions. And, and since that is a bigger, we've actually talked about that as a separate project. Yes. And the building inspector would like to have it, uh, like to see something, but that's not going to happen right. next. So we have to integrate the def. We have to create a definition section. Within the body gotcha. of the bylaw. Okay, so what we'll yeah, okay, so we'll be making this a special. You must have a special permit section in your bylaws. Uh, no, not really. We okay. have a section that says what is. <laughs> that's another thing you're working on for us. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Uh, an that's updated section of uh, special permit yeah. procedures. Okay. So, so uh, we'll 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 make this like. Uh, I think we would have this after the senior housing overlay district. Yeah, we'd have this as a freestanding section. Okay. And, and in, in the table of use, yeah, we'll refer back to it. Yeah, the okay. table of use will and the table of use will establish what. We, so we don't have to. I guess we won't have to say. 
in the body of the bylaw that it is permitted. Well, I'm trying to think of how we want to work in the not in the village center overlay district because that's an overlay district. We might want to put that we, in that district in, in section. What, 14. We, what we what you could say. For the business district, we could simply say that it's permitted from the intersection of the bike path on Route 9 zone business well, to, well, the, to the Amherst Town line. Well, this is going to show business. up in the table of use regulations as a principal use. Yeah. It's going to be a, a, a RMD so, and an OOMD. So, and then it'll be, and I'm assuming you want planning board special permit or ZBA special planning, planning board. Okay, board. then you'll have, and under the business district and the industrial district, for both of them, you'll have. Special permit site plan approval by the planning board. Then let's just create a new zone, a district. Just call this the marijuana dispensary district. Yeah. Well, I, th I don't think it's that. I think it's easier than that. Um, uh, well, I you think know we can, We're going to talk about the table of uses. Correct. So, but I think you can in, in your village center district or even this district, we could just put in something that says, you know, it doesn't include the uh, village center overlay. Okay, so that's yeah. yeah. This would be better. section yeah. twenty nine for yep. the zoning bylaws. Section twenty nine. Okay. X I X. Okay. Yeah, I'll find some way to work that in. So just a question on the signage. I think you had said that they're not allowed to use the word. Yeah, no they can't have a leaf. They can't have a bond. They can't. Uh, yeah. And that, that's a, uh, and this is where that's in a, a little bit, no, it's in the DPH regulations. They've kind of wandered into zoning in some respects, mildly, uh, like they do have requirements relative to the signage. If you have a landscaping provision in your thing where you require landscaping for commercial facilities, they have a provision in there that the landscaping can't be high enough for people to hide behind. So, it's... So I'm wondering if we should, because... That looks like a really big bylaw to refer it, it to. It's hard can to find we, stuff in there. Can we put that? I mean, we do like our signage to be pretty clear and concise. And just can say we should conform. Yeah, we could. Conform. Uh, and we'll just stick a uh, we'll just stick a signage section under here, someplace. And then I'll just uh, take out what the state law has and yeah. pop okay. it in. Well, here, here's one of your comments. Um, Documentation that it is a nonprofit entity incorporated in Massachusetts as defined in 105 CMR, yada, yada, as well as a list of all the executives proposed for the RMD, yep. a list of all members of the nonprofit corporation. Documentation that has at least $500,000 and is controlled and available as evidenced by bank statements, lines of credit, or the equivalent to ensure the applicant has sufficient resources. If an entity is submitting more than one application, each subsequent application shall be $400,000. So if you're putting three yeah. facilities in, you're going to have uh, $1.3 million basically in cash. Yeah. Those people that came in from Pittsfield, you, those, the other suits were the investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a heck of a non-profit. Yeah. yeah. So Would they have that kind of capital? Well, yes. <laughs> well because non non-profit doesn't mean you're it's, not making that's money. That's correct. It doesn't mean you're not making. It just money. means you're you're distributing it equally. That's correct. It's. Uh, we'll defer to it, the it, lawyer, but the fact remains is that uh, it, it not the corporation profit. can give oh, the yeah. the top executives. All the profit, yes. and therefore, at the end of the year, the corporation. Yep. Well, Nonprofit just about. doesn't have shareholders. That's right. Yeah. Mrs. Helmsley, the heiress to uh, one of the big hotels, and the rich people don't pay taxes. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. always can work out write offs and loopholes well, they, and donations and stuff. They pay t in individual <laughs> They give, they give yeah. it to the Jimmy Fund. There you go. Yep. That's yeah. a really fun. Yeah, yeah, the, fund. the physical, the yeah. signage thing could be addressed. Uh, um, Page three B yeah. seven signage in compliance with state regulations. Um, okay, but you want the actual regulations in there. We might want to be a yeah. little excerpt them because that's so they don't have to hunt and peck in so that we don't have to. Yeah, but, yeah, the other, right. but the other but the other part of that is that we don't need to. We, 
we, I don't want to get into a situation with someone coming in saying, but um, your bylaws incorporates this section of the regulations by reference, but it doesn't incorporate that section. So what you normally say um, is, you know, the, the you know, signs have to comply with section, section, section of the sign regulations, and in addition, you stick in with the DPH stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, we yes, we definitely have the control over signage that we have under our, our general by our, in, under our zoning bylaw anyway. So the size will be limited, and we have uh, we always ask to see what they're going to put up. So we have right. that control. I mean, and it's like you know, we don't put a parking requirement in here. That doesn't mean they don't comply with your normal parking requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On uh, page five, at the bottom of the page, uh, number four, findings. Uh, findings give the connotation of kind of a legal interpretation. Uh, the ZBA can have a finding, uh, or, is, or am I stretching? Well, that's what called. I mean, when you issue a special permit, yes. you are required by law to, make, to state in your decision how that application meets all your requirements, and they call those findings. Okay. So. Thank you. Yes. Thank so what we're saying is in addition to all the other special permit site plan findings, you've also got to meet these particular ones as well. All right. So that gets into, and I think I raised this the last time, that you get into what the findings are. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, some of them are really sort of beyond that the meets a demonstrated need. Yeah, it, it, where if they had the license from the state first, yeah. bingo. Yeah. But if they go to you first, that's a little, uh, or, or unless you say we've already got one. You know, you haven't shown us that there's the de demand, the demand for the clientele that warrants a second one. If okay. you're concerned about having too many. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. If there's none around, okay, then it's probably the need is might be obvious. Yeah. But if you've got one, let's say there's one over the town line in Amherst, right. you really need one to put one in Hadley. Right. Show us the show so us the need for it. Show us, you know, yeah. that you have the demand for it. Okay. Yeah, because remember, if to start with anyway, they're only going to permit 35 of these across the state to start. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I think they're pro uh, what I had heard was they're looking at probably starting off with like somewhere less than somewhere under 20. So is there, I think at some point you said there was a board of directors. Is there a board of directors for each? For the corporation? Depend, if, they're, if it's a corporation, yeah, there would be. Okay. Yeah. And do we need their information as well? I know we have. Yeah, it's in there. It's in there. Yeah. And the managers? Yep. Yeah. Right. I saw the managers. I, I think the, court, the uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 3D, page 5. Part of the application is a notarized statement signed by the RMD or OMD organization's chief executive officer and corporate attorney disclosing all of its des designated representatives, including officers, directors, shareholders, partners, members, managers, and other similarly situated individuals and entities and their addresses. If any change, they've got to be updated. So, so you can call them at night and harass them. Just another question on, uh, let's see, the, uh, requiring the removal of all material and other paraphernalia if it has to surrender its state registration or mm -hmm. cease operation. Um, like I know with the solar, we required a bond because yeah. it's do we, are we thinking there's just a market for this or is it going to be left there or what happens if yeah. they just That, might, that might be legitimate. Like a decommissioning fee, or hmm. what do they call it? The solar. Yeah, the solar and cell towers routinely have something. Because maybe it, I mean, but the federal, state, not real. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, I would imagine, you know, who takes it. Yeah, that's a good point. We could put it in there. The worst attorney general will do is throw it out. I take that line out. Yeah. Add bond. Yeah, Add bond. Decommissioning bond. Yeah. We don't want to set an amount now to be determined 
or should we? No, to, to be determined because it's going to change. I mean, as the size, depending on the size yeah. and depending on. Um, I mean, I would think that the decommissioning may change as years go on. Yeah, it's going to be tough to. I mean, you don't have a dollar amount in your cell tower. No. By law, so no. Right. But you do require. It. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I did notice on page three, top of the uh, two A four, you do then have RMD that can demonstrate that they comply with the agricultural exemption, must still apply for site plan approval. I don't know yeah. to what extent that undermines the f the determination that um, it's in the definition. Yeah. Um, well, site plan approval is permitted by right, okay? But, and a special permit is only about the appeal process, so that may be okay. Because we're not... Yeah, cause, well, it, this is sort of a safety valve, which is if they are determined to be exempt, because the way the law is written with agricultural uses, we'll get into this when we talk about your table of uses, it says you can't prohibit them or unreasonably regulate them. Right. So you can reasonably regulate them. Reasonably regulate, okay. correct, as you point out, could be site plan approval because that's not a really a it, it, denial type thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. No, it's just. Yeah. I, no, I, I can see what you're saying too. Yeah. Though. I was just concerned that it, it undermines. It undermines the other part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's true. What if we say oh, that they have to come back? Well, will, will they? They'll be applying for agricultural exemption at the time. I mean, they'll say that well, they've they would been have to uh, exemption, or we'll be in court. We'll not approve them, and then they will go to court, yeah, yeah. and they'll get approved. Yeah. And then, can we say they need to come back before the planning board? Because that's what your bylaw says. Yeah. Yeah. The, the one thing <clears throat> I want to be mindful of is we don't spend too much time chasing uh, shadows on yes. this, because what we're talking about is one or maybe two in in town. Um, I would suspect that um, you know we we have more cell towers than we will have marijuana dispensaries. How many nonprofits bill have agricultural exemptions in that? I don't know that we inventory that. Most yeah. firms. Yeah, probably in some respect. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Officially, though, yeah. Not yeah. even count the, the stands on the side of the road. Um, <laughs> I think we pro you probably could look at the uh, secretary. You could probably index through the Secretary of State's database whether there are not-for-profits that are registered in Hadley, um, right. and then we yeah. could figure out how many are. Uh, I think it would be a small number. Uh, there, there would be a couple. I know that there are a couple of organizations. There's one entity. I think it's off of Mount Warner somewhere that. Uh, <clears throat> has some holistic approach to agricultural education. Um, yeah. I mean, at this point, the, the application the, procedure for filing with the state is closed. Yeah, the, the food They've got their first round. Be. I think they're supposed to start Maybe. approving yeah. them, I think, uh, next month, is, is what I believe what I, I recall. And I do have a list of who, uh, who submitted applications. So it's not, uh, I don't recall any Hadley Farms, but uh, a lot of lawyers. You know, so only one farm in the area is one from Waitley and probably will not be approved. Yeah. Yeah, Jim was mentioning the food bank farm is probably a not for profit that is <clears throat> operating on a Yeah. You know, that, that's that might be a good yeah. location, but I doubt they would be the applicant. Right. And that's the yeah, agricultural right. residential anyway, outside of there you go. So um, okay. But if it's approved for agricultural you, you mean go it, anywhere. a court case? Yeah. Well, which is why I encourage you to talk to your state rep or state senator to get them to do what they need to do to correct that. Because I think that's a huge problem. You know, that, I think that could be a huge problem. Yeah, just needs I one. Mean, does that supersede the 500 feet from where children it, congregate? It could. I mean, that's the question. Cause no, I'm going to say it can't because that's in the Department of Public Health regulations. So I think that sticks no matter what. I think what it what would happen was just in terms of your zoning map, your table of uses, that's up the window. Okay. So basically, 
what we talked about was a few changes. I think they sound good. Not many. Now, you'll go and make these changes sure. and, and put them in the right format yep. and get back to us with yep. it. Okay. Now, I'll try not to use yellow highlights and stuff. I just. Yeah. <laughs> That was very helpful though. Thank you. It was very interesting. <laughs>